Now, when did you last sit down and write a letter? And I'm not talking to you with your nib quivering like a hummingbird over the green ink. Chances are it's been a fair while since you received a letter either. Perhaps then the only thing left to do is to read other people's outpourings. The popular website Letters of Note is to publish its first book in October, filled with the personal scribblings of the rich and famous from yesteryear. And the site has given Newsnight access to some of the letters. So with his tongue curled heartbreakingly over his upper lip, the unlettered Stephen Smith has compiled this August filler, I mean this urgent dispatch. You know Elvis as the king of rock and roll. You might not be so familiar with him as a sparkling conversationalist on the page. A little less conversation, a little more action, please. Here he is offering to keep tabs on the degenerate youth of America on behalf of President Nixon, whom he looks forward to meeting on a trip to Washington, D.C. Dear Mr. President, first I would like to introduce myself. I'm Elvis Presley and admire you and have great respect for your office. I am registered under the name of John Burroughs. I will be here for as long as it takes to get the credentials of a federal agent. I have done an in-depth study of drug abuse and communist brainwashing techniques, and I am right in the middle of the whole thing. I would love to meet you just to say hello if you're not too busy. Respectfully, Elvis Presley. P.S. I believe that you, sir, are one of the top ten outstanding men of America also. Elvis was... Um I wouldn't say famously, but he was a collector of police badges um, and he tried to obtain police badges from every state in the US. The one he didn't have was uh, a badge from the Bureau of um, Narcotics and Dangerous Drug Use, I think it was called. Um, the only way he could think of getting one of these badges was to write to Nixon. Angelo Miola is a calligrapher. No, not a sex-mad Italian, you're thinking of Caligula. Though the highly respectable Angelo here has given Cupid a nudge from time to time, writing bespoke love letters on behalf of shy gents. The President's car was now approaching, and the Queen herself, with Princess Margaret, awaited his arrival. You know how it is when you go abroad. You meet a nice couple, promise to keep in touch. President Eisenhower was treated to tea by the Queen and naturally complimented her on her scones. Then this happens. Dear Mr. President, seeing a picture of you in today's newspaper standing in front of a barbecue grilling quail reminded me that I have never sent you the recipe of the drop scones which I promised you at Belmoral. We have followed with intense interest and much admiration your tremendous journey to so many countries, but feel we shall never again be able to claim that we are being made to do too much on our future tours. Yours sincerely, Elizabeth R. I think clearly this is an interesting letter because it's trying to impersonate an intimate private letter. Um, Personally, I think it's a little bit uh, fake. The idea that the Queen had this, um, this recipe for drop scones um, to hand, or that she typed, typed out the recipe herself, is a little bit um, unconvincing. Research for this program from the internet shows that the volume of mail, including letters handled by the post office, reached a peak of some 20 billion items a year by 2000 and has since slipped back to 15 billion. Handwriting and the handwriting of letters still matters because it just shows so much investment in the subject, in the occasion of communication. I think for most of us there are still important occasions um, in our lives when we would specify that um, a letter needs to be handwritten on paper. Um, we, would, uh, we would probably write, for instance, to a bereaved friend um, with, uh, with a pen on paper. I think most people would still do that. Of course, there are some letters you might prefer not to get like a sanguinary notelet from Jack the Ripper. From hell, Mr. Lusk. Sir, I send you half the kidney I took from one woman, preserved it for you. 
The other piece I fried and ate. It was very nice. I may send you the bloody knife that took it out. If you only wait a while longer. Signed, catch me when you can, Mr Lusk. It's definitely the perfect time to look back at this sort of thing and, and try and make it accessible to as many people as possible because they do, lots of these letters already exist in archives and museums and, and old books um, and I just find it very satisfying to bring them all into one kind of place. Einstein wrote to the White House in 1939 voicing his concern that scientists were on the brink of developing a terrible new weapon, the atomic bomb. Certain aspects of the situation which has arisen seem to call for watchfulness and, if necessary, quick action on the part of the administration. I believe, therefore, that it is my duty to bring to your attention the following facts and recommendations. That it may become possible to set up a nuclear chain reaction in a large mass of uranium, by which vast amounts of power and large quantities of new radium-like elements would be generated. This new phenomenon would also lead to the construction of bombs. A single bomb of this type, carried by boat and exploded in a port, might very well destroy the whole port together with some of the surrounding territory. If you've enjoyed our coverage of letters, you might like to forward a link to Newsnight to a friend or loved one. The modern equivalent of the chain letter. Well, here now is the Telegraph's uh, social media editor, Kate Day, and the poet, Roger McGough. Is this something you think we need to worry about, Roger? Um, well, well, I do. I think it's, it, it's a, it might be a lost art. I mean, I think... Uh, it's very important, I think, when children at school to learn how to write, and we're, we're losing that. If there's that's no a handwriting need, course, handwriting thing, yeah. But then, then we're handwriting, then they write letters, and if if uh, just typing in, tweeting, using uh, internet, people are going to lose the ability to write, aren't they? And it's very tactile, very sensuous, and and, and good for the soul. Do you worry about it, Kate? Not particularly. I agree with Roger that it's important that children can write, but I think that also children need to learn to use language. Learning to write a very well-constructed email could teach them that as well as writing a letter. But what's happening here is that we're moving from the considered letter, hmm. the, a series of expressions of feelings and, or, or disquisitions on subjects, on a piece of paper which have been composed to instantaneous communication. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, the, the letter is is a conversation. It's a whisper, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas the the email is, um, you know, it tends to be forceful, authoritative, I think, informative. Does it not depend largely on the email? You can throw away an email very quickly and tell somebody you're going to be five minutes late, or you can sit and write something thoughtful and considered. Ah, uh, yes. And it's, do you do that? Yeah, from time to time. Do you do not hugely posting too. Yeah, particularly. Tweeting? private messages on Facebook and Twitter. I wouldn't necessarily want to make those messages public because they're probably more intimate or intended to, for one other person. But I certainly sit down and write considered emails and receive considered emails. And I think you know when you get an email whether somebody's put time into it or whether it's just a thrown away message. It's, it's funny, I was talking to my, uh, my son, my, uh, my 22, about this before I came out. And he said that he'd find it pretentious maybe to, to write a letter. A lot of younger people find it this, uh, except if you're, you know, writing a bereavement or you're writing a you know, farewell letter or something, um, and emails they use. Except if you wouldn't like a, a Valentine and an email, would you like a? Do you get Valentine, Valentine emails? I have had. <laughs> Were you a bit put off by that? Wouldn't you have a nice letter smelling of aftershave or something? Well, I think this. <laughs> <laughs> scented tweets. Scented tweets. Not really is that your we thing? We can do at the moment. No, no. But I remember. Um, actually, I remember. Sorry, but I remember when I was at u university in those days. You used to get letters from my mum, mum, and, and yeah. dad. My mum, she wrote a lot. She was very chatty and very gossipy. Mums are. My dad, who wasn't, you know, overly good at writing, he wrote, wrote in capital letters. But when I got his letters, it was wonderful, few and far between, but you could almost smell the tobacco. And the time he'd taken to do it was so personal. Email they'd have just done. And, this know, does I, raise I the question of, of, of archives, doesn't it? I mean, you look at the, some of those examples of letters given there. There's a physical artefact. Mm. You get some sense of the person 
from that in a way you'd never really get it, do you, from an electronic communication? Well, you certainly lose the physicality, that's true. But you do get an intimacy by sharing the moment, I think, in a way that you can't with a letter. But supposing you're a historian or a biographer or something and you're going back through someone's correspondence and all you've got is a series of emails sent or received, is it anything like as good as letters? Well, you could argue it's better. You're likely to Why? have a lot more stored. You're going to get a much wider picture of that person's life. And wouldn't you like to read David Cameron's emails or the Pope's emails or the Queen's emails? I think communication... You think is... it's more honest, in a way? I think you probably get a broader picture. So you'll get some of the formal messages from very public figures that they're sending as head of state, but you might also get their private communications that are much more casual. And so you get a much richer picture about who they are um, because we can store all of that now in a way that it was much more uh, ad hoc in the past with physical letters. But there's something about the letters. It's, it's the letter and someone's been out doing the gardening. You can, it might be a bit of soil on the letter or, or the, the ink runs out and you refill the different colour, all this practicality. Remember like doing uh, and judging children's competitions, poetry competitions? 10, 15 years ago, five, six-year-olds sent the, their little poem, handwritten, little drawings around it, you know, mistakes, bad spelling. Now, of course, they all come, looks like a, a Salman Armitage or a Caroline Duffy poem, you know, perfectly written and typed and, you know, with spell check. And something's lost from those poems. In the same way, I think, you know, email is cold to me. Emailing. But isn't there something wonderful about sharing a moment with somebody that the instantaneous nature of digital communication gives you? So if you're yeah. listening to a song and you send yeah. somebody yeah. a tweet and you know they're thinking about it at exactly the same moment, there's something quite yeah. lovely about yeah. that. That is a point. Yes, yes. I mean, I, mean, I do both. My, I, I'm an occasional tweeter, um, but I like reading. I mean, just, I mean it, reading the paper about the, the famous beard, or people There's are tweeting a lot of rubbish about. on Twitter. I know. <laughs> tweeting about it. I mean, one, if, if, if they'd known that, we, we'd write letters about it. Let, measured letters would be think nice. We, I think we'll stop this conversation. Sorry, oh, sorry. Thank sorry, you very sorry, much. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> now, we all need to drink more beer. It's the sort of political instruction Homer Simpson can understand. No less a